Good evening, good evening. Good, beautiful, beautiful Wednesday evening. We bless God for this opportunity once again to come before you guys and uh, be able to uh, get in the word of God tonight. I, I pray that all is well with you guys tonight. I, I pray that the Lord may find you right now in perfect peace. And uh, I just bless God tonight for this opportunity once again to come before you guys. I know the last two weeks have been uh, a little different, having to uh, go back into the archives due to uh, being out of town. And then not only that, uh, just dealing with some some uh, things that happens in life. Amen. So we, we just thank God for this opportunity tonight to come again live. We bless God that it is because of him that we live, move, and have our very existence. And we bless him for this day. For this is the day the Lord has made, and we shall uh, rejoice and be glad in it. And we just thank God for this opportunity. Uh, it's truly a blessing to be able to uh, indulge in his word and to get into his word and hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in this season. And always with an ear... Uh, to hear the word of God for we recognize that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God and we thank God for the opportunity that he has given those that are born again those that have accepted Christ as Savior he has given you a spiritual ear to hear as a born again believer you have a spiritual ear to hear and we praise God for that, and we thank him for that opportunity, and we thank him for his mercy and his grace. We thank him for uh, his son, Jesus, who went up on Calvary's cross and, and and gave us that way. For he said he is the way, the truth, and the life. And we bless God for that. We we thank God that he, he showed mercy when he gave his son that we had an opportunity to come and accept him as our Savior and be born again and have life everlasting. We thank God for the opportunity again to be amongst the living that are walking, that, that yet are walking, but yet dead because they're still dead in their sins and trespasses. And we pray that the word of God will touch hearts, that they'll be waking up, that they'll be quickened and, and made alive through the spirit of God. And we we just bless God for this opportunity, and I thank God for you guys chiming in tonight. And I, I pray that something would be said tonight that we would recognize our completeness within Christ. Our completeness within Christ. We that are uh, uh, that are born again believers, those have that have accepted Christ as Savior, you are complete in Christ. You are complete because. Of Christ, it is Him that finished the complete. He He finished it all. He justified us. He sanctified us, and yet being sanctified, and He redeemed us. Everything that we need as the body of Christ, Christ did it. He He's, He completed the work. He completed the work. And as we look at our study tonight, before I get ready to get into our new lesson. I wanted to to really get more in depth in uh, some of the other uh, uh, scriptures or some of the other things that we really need to look into as the body of believers to be able to go to uh, uh, this next uh, uh, study that I want to do. I, I'm always preaching and teaching Christ Jesus. Why? Because. Uh, uh, <laughs> That he is the power. I mean, the, the power lies within Christ Jesus. We are completely uh, uh, fulfilled through Christ Jesus. And I got to, I have to. There's nothing else that I can preach upon or teach upon other than Christ Jesus as our completion. That will complete the believer. That will uh, give the, the believer the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding that he needs. To go forth as a believer, we have to truly acknowledge and understand that the, 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 the finished work of the cross of Christ completed us, justified us, made us whole, made us able to stand before God perfect in Christ. Amen. And we, we, we oftentimes we feel that uh, you, you see it a lot that it's something else that we're running after 
uh, that, that we shouldn't be as believers. Once we know that we truly trust Christ for salvation, and then now guess what we're able to do? We're able to work in Christ because Christ working in us. It is the fulfillment of the word. It's the fulfillment. Everything has been fulfilled once you accept Christ as your Savior and begin to learn of him and walk in him. Then it's him. All, it, it is, it is, it's through Christ. Everything comes through Christ. God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he said, if we believe upon him, and if we believe upon him, that means we trust the finished work of the cross of Christ. And we recognize that the power is through the Holy Ghost, the power that we receive once we believe upon Christ and Christ alone for salvation, once we believe. Yeah, uh, 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 the law brought you to the cross. I, I, it came upon me today that the law brought you to your knees at the cross. And then Christ, God raised you up in Christ through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you came to your knees in sin as a, a sinner to the cross because of the law. And yeah, God raised you up to, in Christ. Yeah, to be a believer. So we just thank God for that opportunity that he has uh, that saved us through the finished work of the cross. And we thank God for the blood that was shared for the remission of sins that that they're blotted out. Yeah, they're blotted out. They're, they, they, they're, they're, we just bless God for that. I say good evening. I say good evening to everybody. I bless God for you guys. And, and I mean, it's really a blessing to be able to uh, come and, and share the word of God with with uh, believers and, and maybe even somebody that haven't yet believed. I just pray that that the seeds that are sown today will fall upon uh, good ground. I pray that God would open somebody's heart tonight to uh, receive Christ as Savior and, and be born again. I, I thank God for the born-again believers that are chiming in. I bless God for you guys. And I pray that something would be said tonight through the power of the Holy Spirit that help us on our spiritual journey that we're walking on this earth. Uh, that we're walking on this earth. I pray that something be said or something through the power of the Holy Spirit would help us in our walk and, and to help us uh, along the way share the word of God with somebody else uh, uh, that they too may be saved. Amen. So as we get into our lesson tonight, let's look at, I want to start tonight by looking at uh, Colossians. I want to go to Colossians. I want to go uh, to that to that book of the Bible, Colossians, and I want to go to that second chapter. And when that when we're going in the scriptures, I want us to really, uh, as I pray, hear the prayer and allow it to come into your spirit, man, and really uh, agree with me in that sense that I'm praying that God will open up our spiritual ears and that our fleshly heart if that be a born again heart, the circumcised heart, that that word will manifest even within our hearts, that we may understand the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that God has given us through the scripture. Amen. I thank God for this opportunity. So let us pray. Father, we come before you right now, Lord God, blessing you for this opportunity once again. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We lift up your holy name. Father, we're grateful and we're thankful, Lord God, that, that you shared your love upon us when you gave your son, Jesus Christ. And we just thank you for that. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that, that indwells in us, oh God, through you, Father. Father, now we ask right now, Lord God, that spiritual ears be open tonight. And we pray, Lord God, that stony hearts be pierced through with the word of God that somebody may come and get saved tonight, Lord God. And we pray those that have accepted you as Savior tonight will be edified, Lord God, that they too may speak the truth and love to somebody else and they hear the word of God. And we just bless you for this opportunity, Lord God, to just be uh, uh, endowed with your word, oh God. So we just bless you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name, we pray and we say amen. We amen and amen. I bless God for you guys. We're going to get into the word tonight. And, and, and as you hear the word of God, let us understand that we're being complete in Christ. We're complete in Christ. And, and when we when we and, and, and we want to make sure that we 
see that uh, physically, spiritually, mentally, we want to get so that we will recognize that it's Christ in us who is the hope of glory. Amen. We want to recognize, see, we, we got to recognize that it's nothing. And I know I know I might I make people mad when I say that, but flesh and blood cannot enter into heaven. Period. Flesh and blood cannot enter. And, and, and flesh and blood is, is not, it, it can't enter. It's, and so we recognize that in our flesh, that is there is nothing, there's nothing good in our flesh. Our flesh, man, that's nothing good, period. So we recognize that our power is in the spirit, man. And we recognize that the only way we can feed the spirit, man, is through the word of God. The only way we can worship God is in spirit and in truth. We can't, you can't make a dead man, somebody that hasn't been born again, he can't worship God in spirit and truth. Why? Because he's yet dead. You have to be born again. You have to come and accept Christ as your Savior and be born again. You got to be born of the spirit. You got to be born of the spirit to understand and even hear the word of God through spiritual ears because that word is true. I mean, it's the power of God. It's the power of God. The, the, the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe it. Amen. And, it, and it, even in the scripture said that the cross of Christ to those that are perishing, uh, it, it don't mean none to them, but he it said it's to us that are saved. It is the power of God. The cross of Christ is the power of God to those that are saved. So we got to continuously recognize Christ crucified. That's the foundation of the believer's walk. And if we ever be, if we ever begin to take Christ out of our walk, then you you just walking in vain. Basically, really, yeah. We we got to understand that that the life that we live now, we live it in the hope of the Son of God. Yeah, He's our hope. He's our strength. He's our peace. He's our redeemer. He's our uh, sanctification. He's our justification. He's our all in all. So we 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 want to get that. Just as well as we get everything else that we walk in this life, we get. We want to make sure that we invest in our spirit, man, with what? The word of God. You have to invest. As a believer, you have to invest in your spirit, man, daily. I mean, I mean, it, I, I, I mean we're rich through what God has done uh, through Christ Jesus. We recognize that, that, that. We are, are victorious through what Christ did upon the cross. We recognize that we, it's, the, the victory is won. It's done. But the, but the enemy do comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's why we want to look at this completeness in Christ Jesus tonight. Because we want to make sure that we're able to put on that full armor of God as the enemy want to throw the fiery dart settles. We want to make sure that we're standing in Christ. Amen. We want to make sure that we're not trying to stand in our flesh. We're not trying to go by some philosophy or some uh, foolish stuff that you see on TV. We want to stick with the word of God because that's where the strength lies at. That's where the breastplate of righteousness is. That's where the helmet of salvation is. Amen. This is what we need. That's where that sword, which is that word. This is the strength of, of, of what the finished work of the cross gives us. We understand that it's a lot. Some people, man, all you want to do is preach the cross of Christ. Man, that is the finished work of the, and the finished work of the cross is what a power is, man. If Christ hasn't been resurrected, ain't no power. <laughs> so if you if you believe on anything other than the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ unto salvation, your hope is in anything else other than Christ Jesus, then it's hopeless because everything else is perishing. The only way that we have anything everlasting and is through Christ Jesus because God has promised us everlasting life. And not only that, he will keep us while we yet walk in this earth, he will keep us. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. So let us look at Colossians and let's go to the book of Colossians. Let's go to the book of Colossians. I pray you have your Bibles with you because you need your sword. Yeah, that's that word. You need your sword. Yes, sir. You need it. It's a must. You know, you, 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 you got to have this. And we want to look at this, Paul, to the church at Calus. We want to look at Paul talking to the body of believers and in this epistle and, 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 and constantly reminding them who they are in Christ, constantly reminding them in the epistles to beware of certain teaching, 
constantly reminding them to beware of not to be so uh, 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 high-minded within yourself. Because the Bible tells us to humble ourselves before the Lord thy God. And in due time, he would exalt us. The only exaltation that we want to be exalted by God. We want God to exalt us, okay? We want, we, in other words, I, I don't want no credit for anything. The only credit I want is that I don't want no credit. I want everything to be done in Christ. And I thank God for that opportunity that I don't have to even worry about trying to lift myself up because he has already been highly lifted up. Amen. So we got to get to that point that we recognize Christ is Christ. It's Christ. It's Christ. It's Christ. It's Christ. It's Jesus Christ. It's Christ. 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 Amen. And we got to re recognize that. Look at the scripture tonight. Look at it with me and let, let the scripture speak to your spirit, man. Good evening once again. Good evening once again. Go with me into Colossians chapter 2 and listen to the words. Listen very closely. He said, Paul said, For I would that ye know what great conflict I have for you. He said, And for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Pay attention now that their hearts might be comforted. Paul said that, 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 that you guys, look, y'all might not have seen me in the face. He recognized that these are new believers. He recognized that they have been going through uh, 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 trials and tribulation because they're new believers now. They've been uh, sought after after the circumcision. Everybody that's coming at them because they got this, uh, they, they're now they're believing uh, Christ. They, they, they believe in by grace now the finished work of the cross. They have new believers uh, 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 believing upon Christ now. And, and they want to uh, uh, do away with a lot of the things that the law having them doing. And Paul was showing them that we were saved by grace, not by works that any man should boast that we're saved by grace. He said, the law was to show you how sinful you are. The law is what brought you to your ends. And now, man, there's the finished work of the cross that you got to come and believe Christ. Now, all that dead work that you've been doing, now that work, it, it, it is not, it, it makes the cross of Christ a not a fact. He said, so I want to comfort you. I want to comfort you in your hearts. Here it is. He said, being, he wants us to be knit together in love and to all the riches and the full, listen now, listen. Because I, I want us to understand that these, these believers were getting, and, and this is the only way, we're getting the same word that I'm giving you right now. The word now is still living word. And the word that you receive, it, it applies to us right now, this day. Pay attention to what he's saying to the body of believers. He said, being knit together in love. You know when grandmama used to knit the things together, she kept weaving and woven the things together. He said, "Y'all want? I want y'all to be knit together. I want y'all to knit together. I want y'all to come together and, and knit together in love. Here it is. Unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. Here it is. To the acknowledgement of the mercy of God and of the Father and of Christ. Okay, pay attention. In whom all in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Needed to get in love to get to understand and to know this is what this is what he's saying. To know what the complete work that Christ did up on the cross. What did that work do for us as the body of believers? The finished work in the cross. And being filled with the Holy Spirit, you need to know the knowledge of all that. You need to know the understanding of what happened when Christ said, I will leave you, but I will not leave you comfortless. He told the disciples that, and that same Holy Spirit that fell on them as the body of believers, when you accept Christ as Savior and believe upon him by faith, you too are filled with the Holy Ghost. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And by being sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise, then the mystery of God and our Father, then we'll be able to have the full assurance and of understanding 
uh, the acknowledgement, the mystery of God and the Father uh, of God and the Father and Christ. Pay attention. And pay attention to this. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Paul said that the Holy Spirit that was promised to us will do this. The full assurance of understanding and acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. As we learn and as Holy Spirit speak through us through the word of God, we will understand the full mystery of what Christ came to be the fulfillment of the law. And, and, and not only that, that he uh, brought the, 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 the Gentiles in, okay, it was to the Jews first. But the mystery is that God sent his only begotten son that everybody could come to Christ and be saved by grace through faith in the word of God. And then, and, 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 and I mean, and, and it's as simple as believing upon Christ, recognizing that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And guess what? You'd be saved by grace through faith in what Christ did upon the cross, completeness uh, in Christ. The complete work of that cross, the complete work of Calvary, is it, 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 it's done. It's finished. Okay, here it is. Here it is. But let nobody beguile you now. And he's going to go on down in this because he wants you, he wants Paul, wanted them to be sure that they be steadfast upon what he's taught them about that grace. He wants them to be steadfast about what he told them that their works didn't save you. Works can't save you. It's only the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed upon that cross and God's love that he did it when he gave his son. That is the only way that man can be saved. The law cannot save. The law cannot save. But the law was to show you how sinful man is. The law was to bring you to the cross. Amen. And when the law brought you to the cross and then you was able to, to receive Christ as Savior, then guess what? Christ said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Paul wanted to make sure that wasn't nobody coming in telling you, well, you need to do this and you need to do that. Don't be beguiled. Don't, don't be fooled. Don't be tricked. Don't be enticed. With words. Don't let nobody fool you about what well, if you give so much, then you can go to heaven. But if you do this, then you're going to go to heaven. The only way that any man has ever been saved is through the uh, uh, through the, the grace of God from what Christ did up on Calvary Cross. The only way any man ever can be saved and the only way that a man is saved is that believing upon the finished work of the cross. Let's get that right now. The law has never saved nobody. Period. The law was given as a shadow of what was to come. It was, everything that Moses and all of the, the prophets did was all pointing to the cross of Christ. It was all representing the finished work of the cross. The, the animals that were sacrificed, the blood and all, they were all that was represent Christ because Christ was slain before the foundation of the world. The mystery was opened up in the New Testament that Christ is the fulfillment of everything that was done in the old. The old had to bring in the new. The Israelites, they all were under the old covenant. They had to come and accept Christ just as we had. He told them, repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody had to come to Christ, had to come to the, the finished work of the cross. There's nobody can beguile you to tell you that something else in some other way to the Father. For Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. There's no way to the Father but through the Son. There's no way to get to the Father other than through the Son. Amen? He is the complete Word. He's, he's done it all. And when we know this as the body of believers, it'll keep us from being tossed to and fro with any way of a doctrine because we will understand first that the finished work of the cross is what I, my foundation is 
Christ crucified. My foundation is that Christ laid down his life and Christ was crucified and laid in the grave. And on the third day, he arose from the dead and he sat on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Not only that, he was born of the Virgin Mary. His father is God Almighty. He is God Almighty. So he, he is God. He came in three in one. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The three is one. He's the complete of the, he, it's the Godhead. Amen. We and, and come on, I, I want us to get this because we want I want us to be able to understand that that we can't be beguiled. Can't nobody fool me about salvation. Can't nobody fool me about uh uh, uh the Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit dwelling in us as the body of believers. Can't nobody tell me that I got to be it's gotta be a certain way before you receive the Holy Ghost. Now when I believed upon Christ as my Savior, I was sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. Yes, sir. When you believed upon him. You will sin with the Holy Ghost of promise. Why? Because when you believe, guess what? God pierced that heart. Yeah, that heart was pierced. And the only way you can even believe is that God had made, had, come on, I say, God, the word said, can nobody come unto him unless he draw you. Yeah, I couldn't have come to God. I couldn't have came to God unless he draw me. How, how, can, how can some uh, defile and, 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 and evil and and every other word that you owe, how, how can he come to God unless your heart be pricked? How huh? Because man loved dark. That was the scripture say. Man loved darkness. Love, man loved evil. Man loved all that foolishness. So you have your heart had to be pricked by God to even come to the cross of Christ. Amen. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Here it is. And then it said, for though I be, Paul said, though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit. Join and beholding your order. It is. And the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. My completion in Christ comes from my faith in Christ. I have faith in Christ. I am complete in Christ because my faith is only in Christ. My faith is only in Christ Jesus. The finished work of the cross, my faith is in Christ. Paul is telling them that, look, the finished work of the cross is what we're believing for salvation. This is what we're believing for wisdom. This is what we're believing for knowledge. This is what we're believing for justification. This is what we're believing for sanctification. This is what we're believing for, for redemption. So my faith is in Christ. My faith is in Christ. All right, come on, come on. And then guess what Paul said? As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus, here it is, the Lord, so walk in him. As you have also received Christ, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get us to understand the completion or the completeness in Christ within the believer, okay? Within the believer, Okay, if a man haven't came, a woman haven't came, and, and accepted Christ as Savior, then this don't apply to that person that is still lost. If this don't apply to the one that is not trusting Christ by faith and, fa and, and, and trusting Him for salvation by faith alone. This don't come to that. This, this is not. This ain't what he's. This is not who he's talking to. Amen. This is not who he's talking to. And then if I'm coming to Him and I came in and, and this kind of way. They were, Lord, I'm coming to you because I've been so good and that I've done everything right and that I'm, I know I'm perfect. I'm good. I do I do this and I now I just want to accept you as my Savior. Then you need to back up and start over because he ain't accepting nothing from nobody because it's no man that walked this earth good in his flesh, period. Nobody. I don't care if you gave a million dollars to the homeless last year. That don't make you good in God's sight. Oh, pastor, what you talking about? Nope. God requires perfection. And the only way that he got perfection was through his son, Jesus. You can give everything and, and go to your ends, but that don't make you perfect. The only way man is seen perfect is, is through Christ Jesus. Period. Period. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I understand. And guess what? It hurt me too. And that's why I came to the cross. And that's why we got to continuously understand that God, don't, he don't deal with no pride. He hate pride. 
And God ain't dealing with nobody thinking that they are better than his son Jesus. So he might well get used to hearing that when I preach because he is the one. He is the way, the truth, and the light. I don't put nobody else above Jesus Christ for salvation. God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. And this is what this is why Paul is telling them that when we, we walk in Christ, our faith is in Christ. Period. Well, my faith is in Christ, and then my uh, and then uh, such and such, such and such too. No, period. Christ. Yeah, Christ. And when we and when we when we meditate on that, and we understand that, and really understand that that our completeness lies up in the finished work of the cross, then we really can see the wisdom, and we can see the knowledge, we can see the understanding, because then it's not us that's trying to figure it out anymore. Holy Spirit uh, will give you. Everything you need the knowledge and wisdom understanding through the word of God. Amen. Come on. Let me go. I didn't want to stay that long. There you go. Come on. He said it is. He said, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk ye in him. Here it is. Rooted and built up in him. Rooted. We talked about the roots a couple of weeks ago. How that tree need them strong roots rooted and built up in him. In who? In Christ Jesus. Well, see, oftentimes people want to build you up. But what we ought to be doing is we ought to be giving the word of God to build him up. Amen. We ought to, uh, ought to, we ought to humble ourselves before the Lord thy God and in due time let him exalt us. We don't need to be trying to build ourselves up. In some kind of way, we ought to be rooted in him. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. It's Christ in me. Oh, such and such, just you did it now, to God be the glory. Yeah. Well, you and your wife so glad that you did it now, to God be the glory. Oh, uh, such and such, no, I didn't save myself. Christ saved me. It wasn't nothing that I did to save myself. I couldn't save myself. Christ did it all. He did it all. He laid down his life, and I'm grateful for that. I didn't deserve it, but I thank God that he gave me an opportunity to come to this cross and be saved and have everlasting life. And I thank him for the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. I bless God for that. Hallelujah. Amen. See, be rooted in him. Come on. Be rooted in him. Be built up in him. Here it is. And established in the faith. Established. Established. Everybody want to establish something. Well, I'm going to establish this in my life. Well, let's make sure that we establish, be established in faith in Christ as the body of believers, as our spirit man be, be established in Christ. Okay? Come on, come on, come on. I got to go. I want to show you why. I want to show you why Paul is doing this and why he's so, uh, uh, so, uh, I, I don't know the word I want to say, but why he's, trying to make them understand this and, and why he keep drilling this even in in, in the uh, uh, churches of Ephesus, even in Philippi, even in Galatians, all these churches Paul kept preaching and teaching the same thing and he told his preachers to preach this same word. He told his bishops, he told everybody that would, that would set up these churches, when he set these churches up through the power of the Holy Ghost, teach this same thing. Teach these same things. I want you to continue to be on one accord. I want all you guys preaching the cross of Christ. I want all you guys teaching about what Christ did up on Calvary. I want to continue to preach Christ crucified. I want everything that you do to be built on the, sound, the same foundation, be built upon Christ and Christ alone. He said there's no other foundation that no man can lay other than that of Christ. In other words, if, if a foundation been laying up on anything else, it don't, it's no good. Everything, Paul said, everything that we build upon, let's make sure we're building it up on Christ. Okay? Why? Because we want it to be rooted up and we want it to be built up and we want it to be established in the faith of what Christ did upon Calvary. We want it to be uh, established in, and, 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 and built on the foundation of the finished work of the cross. Everything has to go back to the finished work of the cross. Amen? Come, come on. Because we can't be born again and we can't be sons of God unless we go through that process. 
Amen. I can't inherit the kingdom unless I go through the cross. Unless I go to the cross, I first got to make sure that it's all off of me and all on Jesus. Amen. All off of me and all on Christ. Amen. Come on. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, uh, and he said, as, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. See, when you've been born, when you've been taught uh, uh, in Christ and when you've been taught the word of God and put everything on God and not putting it on ourselves, putting it all up on Christ, Paul said that, that you need to be thankful for that. We need to be thankful of the teaching that we're getting because this is why. Pay attention, guys. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you even in, in uh uh Titus, I'm gonna show you in in uh in uh Philippians, I'm gonna show you all the time that Paul kept saying these type of things. It, even in Jude, it said evil men had crept in. You know, in Jude, the book of Jude, he's talking about evil people that will creep in and turn your mind from their cross. See, the enemy don't care about uh some of the foolish stuff that man would talk about, but what he wants you to do is take your eyes off the finished work of the cross. For some reason, he want to make you think that there's some other way to be saved. He wants you to make you think that there's a lot more things that you have to do to be saved. Oh, he wants you to think that Christ ain't the Son of God. He want to think that he want to, he, he want to put all kind of things that, well, you need to do this. You got to do this. Well, if you don't keep this day, then you're not doing that. And if you're not doing this, then you're not doing that. Then guess what? That everything Christ did up on that cross is none effect. Anytime we add something else to the cross of Christ, it's none effect. It makes the cross of Christ of none. It don't even mean anything anymore. This is what Paul is telling them. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this in verse 8. Watch this, guys. Watch this. Listen. Paul said, Beware. When you go up to a, 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 a you when you go up to a building. Or when you go up to a fence and they say, beware of dogs. Beware of vicious dogs. What that, what's that telling you? That it's some danger on the other side of that fence. When you go into an a, a area and you see barriers up and they tell you to beware, that's danger over there. See, that's danger in believing anything for salvation other than Christ crucified, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's, that, that, that's danger in believing that you're saved by any other way than grace. <laughs> There's danger in it is danger in believing uh that is a certain thing that you have to do other than accepting Christ as your savior to be saved. That he said, wait, let me go on and tell you. He said, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. It's in the book. It's in the book. So so when you go and buy all these books and all these different things to tell you. How to do this and how to do that. And if it got anything to do with you going to heaven other than believing upon Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to throw that book away right now. Because guess what he said? Beware lest any man could spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Vain deceit after the traditions of men. Oftentimes out of ignorance of the word of God a uh, uh, man will try to get you in traditions and have you doing all kind of different things and they'll tell you if you don't do this then you ain't saved. The devil is a liar and the devil is a deceiver. The only way that man is saved is through the finished work of the cross. The only way that any man is saved is believing upon Christ as Savior. The shed blood upon Calvary washes away the sins of the world if you will come and and believe upon him. You got to come as a sinner because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Man was born in the sin and shaped in iniquity. The only perfect one is Jesus Christ. The only way that anybody can ever tell you that they are going to heaven one day, and they're going to have to tell you that they accepted Christ uh, they, by grace uh, through faith in what he did on that cross. That's the only way. If a man told you, well, the man I went to my preaching, he told me that if I did this and I did that and I did this and I did that, then I was saved. Then you need to repent and start over again and, and come to the cross of Christ as a sinner. 
Because Christ came to save the ungodly. He didn't, he didn't say, I came to say all those that were good because there was none good. There is none good in the flesh. There's none good in the flesh. You might well cancel that. And, and you might be, well, I'm pretty good. Yeah, you might be pretty good, but you weren't perfect. And God requires perfection. And that's why he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins that we could be saved. And we are complete in Christ. You might as well say amen. Amen. You might as well say amen. Here it is. Here it is. And it said philosophy and vain deceit after traditions of men and the rudiments of the world. And the rudiments of the world. How can we take worldly stuff and mix it with spiritual things of the spirit? How can we take worldly stuff and mix it with spiritual and think we're going to have some positive? He said, he that worship uh, God must worship him in spirit and in truth. How, 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 how? I can't understand how we think we can take worldly stuff and put it in a spiritual arena that and we're supposed to mix it all together and say, well, whoop, we got it. No, man, that ain't that ain't God. He said we, we can't mix this. It's, we got to make sure that we preach in Christ crucified. We got to make sure that we come when we come to Christ, we come before him as lost sinners. And the only way you can be saved is that you admit you're a lost sinner. That you admit you ungodly. That you come into him just as you are. A sinner lost. Without no hope in the world. And accept Christ as the only Savior. The only Savior. And no other. As a believer now. Now you got many people believe in whatever. But when you say you're a born again believer. You come and you believe the finished work of the cross. And you believe it's by grace through faith. And what Christ did up on the cross. Not by works that any man shall boast. Not by works that any man shall boast. Amen. Come on, come on. Paul was telling him, man, y'all need to be sure of this now. Y'all need to be the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. If I'm telling you anything else and I ain't, and if I'm not bringing, letting you know that Christ is the head and he's the bottom, he's in the middle, he's everything, he's all in all. If I don't tell you Christ is all in all and I go to preaching to you about something else and somebody else and other stuff about the rudiments of the world and how to get this money and how to do all this, man, I, I need to preach Christ crucified. Yeah, I need to, pre I need to preach Christ crucified. Because the only thing that's going to stand is what we do for God. And He and the only thing that can stand is what Christ has already prepared for us before the foundation. Well, God done it through Christ. Before the foundation of the world, he was already uh, slain. The lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And that's why we are complete in Christ. Our completion is in Christ Jesus. Okay? Here it is. Come on, I got to go. He said, he said, the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. He said, beware. Beware. He said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. And guess what? After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Beware of anything else that anybody, I'm telling believers, believers, because I know during this time that we've been having to be, uh, We've been having to be on, on, on what they call it, not lockdown, but something similar. We've both been supposed to be staying at home and not going nowhere. Those that, 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 that work or whatever, you can go to work and you're supposed to come home and you don't supposed to be doing all this mingling. You know what I'm talking about. Guess what? If this is a time that the enemy can creep in and you have that TV on. And they be saying, come on, so a seed, and you'll get back such and such and blah, blah. Then why don't you call that same man and say, hey, man, what about if I don't have nothing to sow? Can you still pray for me? I, you mean I got to sow a seed before you pray for me? See what I'm saying? See, these are some of the trickeries. This is you got to, some of the stuff you got to be aware of, that I'm going to say you a blessing. I, I'm, I'm going to say you a blessing. Amen? I, it, it don't work like that. So he's saying beware of these things. Beware of these things that, that's, that's in the world. Beware of these people that are, are money hungry. Beware of these things that people want to try to mix law and grace together and come up with lawless grace. Because grace and law don't mix. Amen? The law to show you how sinful man is and then God saved you by grace. That law showed you your sin and made you recognize how evil and depraved and all that man is. And guess what? That grace 
but God loved you so much that he saved our ratchet behinds by grace. That law showed you how sinful we are. Them commandments, all of them showed you that man can't keep them. Because you lie, you steal, you cheat, you do all kinds of stuff. And guess what? The only way man could be saved is that God's grace saved him. Because we all recognize we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And the only Savior is Jesus Christ. And the only perfect uh, sacrifice is Jesus Christ. And we had to come before him and accept him as our Savior to be made complete, to be made whole. Amen? He done it. Yeah. Come on. I got to go. I got to go. Because Paul is going to tell you, for in him. Come on. Verse 9. For in him. Who? In Christ Jesus. For, and I will say this, for in Christ Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. He, <laughs> he said, for in him dwelleth all fullness of the Godhead bodily. Here it is. And ye are, com you need to watch this. You need to hear this. I, I got to drink a glass of water because I have a cup of water. Because I want us to hear this. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead, and ye are. I wish you had. I wish you. I, I, I hope you got your Bible so you can see this. I want you to. If you don't have, I want you to go back. Because oftentimes we'll feel incomplete. We'll feel inadequate. But guess what? When you're in Christ, you got to understand this. That in him is the fullness. In him is Christ that dwells in us. Come on now. And ye are complete in him. This is what I've been preaching about all night. You are complete in him. Not that he's complete in us, we're complete in him. Which is the head of all principalities and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcisions made without hands. Come on, man. That's the, circumcis the circumcision of our hearts. That's the circumcision of our hearts. He circumcised our heart so you don't have a stony heart. That way he can dwell within us. That's not that heart that you had to go get open heart surgery on, but that one that can feel, that one that have emotion, that one that can forgive, that one that can love, that one, oh man, come on, we, we really need to get that. Go to God in my heart. And a lot of times people be thinking, you talking about this physical heart. Now, man, he's talking about circumcise your heart. That, man, we're the, of the circumcision of our hearts. That way God took the stony heart and put the flesh heart that we can, come on, the Holy Ghost can dwell within us. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. In whom you are circumcised with the circumcision made not with, without hands and put it off the body of sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. The only way that our sins are forgiven that we have to take off the sin body and put on the Christ, the body of Christ. In other words, when everybody be saying, I'm covered by the blood, get what you got about that blood cover. Sin. Yeah. See, a lot of people use that. That blood covered that sin. Because without the remission of the, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. When the bulls were slaughtered, were slaughtered, when the sheep were slain, all that was representing the blood to wash away the sins in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we're under the blood covenant of Christ. The blood that Christ shed upon Calvary. Come on now, here it is. By the circumcision made without hands and put it off the body of of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Here it is. Buried with him in baptism. We were buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen. So you gotta you gotta you gotta you really need to know this. You really need to believe this that you were buried with him and you were risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. As no man to take you under no kind of baptism and tell you that he was the one that made you whole. Now, this was the operation of God. God did it. Amen? It's God. And 
man, come on, we we when we want to take uh, a lot of time, we want to take uh, credit for what God did. Come on, come on, who had raised him from the dead? Here it is now. Here it is. Pay attention, guys. This is very vital to you as a believer who had raised him from the dead, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcisions of your flesh had he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Christ forgave all. God gave all. He forgave all the sin, all the trespasses. When he put it on that cross of Christ, he put it all on him. All his righteous wrath was on him for the sins of the whole world. For those that will come and believe him. He said, Oh, come on, I, I got to go. He said, together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Here it is. Blotting out the handwriting, the ordinance that was against you, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. You see that? Nailing it to his cross. See, I just said it before I said it. <laughs> I said it before I said it. Because I know I know that's the only way that our sins are forgiven. It's just automatic to me. That I know our sins are forgiven but what Christ did upon the cross. There's no other way that we can have forgiveness of sins. Can't, you can't go to no man and tell a man I sinned and then he can blurt you. No, know, man. He did it one time. And when he got through, he sat down on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. When, when Jesus died for our sin, he did it one time. And when he got finished, he ascended into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. We are complete in Christ. David even said, blessed man whose sins are forgiven. I'll go to that scripture and show that to you. That's when, when I tell somebody I'm blessed, that's what I'm meaning. I'm blessed because my sins have been forgiven. That's why I'm blessed. It ain't because I got a whatever, whatever. I'm blessed because God has saved me uh, uh, through the re the, for the wa for the through the washing and regeneration of the spirit. I've been born again. I'm blessed because of that. And ain't nothing that I'm boasting up is I'm boasting in Christ. I bless God for Jesus. Amen. I call. Guess what? Guess what? He he said he took all them sin and nailed it to the cross. And have a small principalities and power, he made a show of them openly. Try up and he triumphed. In other words, he triumphed over all of them. He is it, that's why we are able to say that that we are victorious. Amen. That's why we're able to say that we're complete in Christ. Because he took it all. He took it all up on that cross. He took that righteous wrath of God on that cross, amen, to justify us, those that will believe upon him for salvation. Man, ain't that, ain't that, that's awesome, man. That is awesome. He, come on, come on, come on. I, I, I got to go. I got to go. So he said, let no man therefore judge ye in me. And I want to I want to get into this a little bit, but I'm, I'm going to get more in depth in this. And we're going to get some studies on this. Because oftentimes people want to judge people what they eat. And but we got scriptures to let us know how we should handle that as believers, okay? Because just as we went over here, he was talking about the philosophy and the traditions of men. He said, Don't he said, be aware of that when somebody come to you about that. Then he went on to tell us how we were saved. And he went on to tell us how we were sinful and how we was was uh were dead in trespasses. And then he went on to tell us how we were quickened and made alive through what Christ did up on the cross. And then he want to come back and tell us again, don't, don't let uh, nobody judge you in me. Come on, come on. He said, don't let nobody judge you now. He said, now here it is. Let no man therefore judge you in me or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Here it is, which are a shadow of Things to come, but the body is of Christ. In other words, Christ is the completion of all of it, man. And we got to understand that oftentimes 
why people bring all these different stipulations upon somebody that tell them the way you got to be saved and this is that. Why? It's out of ignorance. It's out of ignorance of what the scriptures say. It's out of pure ignorance of knowing truly what the word of God say about the liberty that we have in Christ. We have liberty in Christ Jesus. Can you live like a... No, no. We, because you're supposed to be walking in Christ. Did, did Christ walk in sin? No, he did not. No. And everything that he's saying that we supposed to be, we supposed to walk in him. Because it's Christ in us. The completion is Christ in us. But guess what? You still got that flesh man. And guess what? That flesh man, yeah. That flesh man want to do what the flesh man want to do. And it said, walk not in the, for, and, and here, I'm going to show it to you. In Romans 8 and 1, it said, therefore, there's no more condemnation to those that are in Christ that walk not out of the flesh, but walk after the spirit. How can I walk out of the spirit, but in Christ? Paul said that he was crucified with Christ. He said he was crucified, but then, but he also said, but the life that he lived in the flesh, he lived it through the son of God. You see what I'm saying? He said, but the life that I live in the flesh, I live it through the Son of God. See, Christ is our completion. We got to understand that there's nothing that man can do in the flesh to please God. Nothing, period. Wait, well, man, I can do this. No, you can't. If you do do that, then you might well go and do it and ring your own bell because you did it for yourself. Everything we do, we got to be doing it. It's got to be done in Christ. In Christ. Here it is. He said, let no man beguile you of your rewards. And if, well, I don't want to go, I don't want to go to that. I don't want to go to that. That's a whole different study. I want to go somewhere else right quick. Let's go right quick. I, I do have, I got a little bit more time. Flip back a couple of books. I'll flip back one book. Flip back one book and go to Philippians. Go to Philippians. Because I want us to continue to recognize that it ain't in us, it's in Christ. Everything is in Christ. And we, and I tell everybody all the time, I'm not a motivational speaker because I can't motivate Christ. <laughs> He's already motivated. He is our motivation. Huh? I can't, I can't lift him up, but, but I can continue to lift you up through the word that you be edified through the word of God that I continue to make you focus upon Christ. If I will keep you focused on the word of God in Christ, then guess what? You will be edified and lifted up because you'll be lifted up through the power of the Holy Ghost because your mind will be upon spiritual things. Oh, man, and not upon things upon earth. You can't fill the spirit man up with worldly stuff and think you're going to have some great big whatever. Because that which is spirit is spirit and that which is flesh is flesh. So whatever you do in the flesh, that's flesh. And whatever you do in the spirit is spirit. Come on now, let, let me let me go. Go to uh Philippians. Go to Philippians and go to chapter three. I got you for a few more minutes. God bless you guys tonight. We're complete in Christ. In Christ. And in Chelsea is in Christ. Yeah. Glory be to God. Come on with it. Come on with it. Philippians chapter three. And it, and it, and it, and it, and it, and it really is, it, it, what I want to say, it really would do the body of believers, it really would do the believers to continuously, continuously, continuously feed your spirit man. Oftentimes we can put so much foolishness in us out of the world that is just like Paul is saying, beware. Beware what you put in your spirit, man. Beware what you what you listen to. Make sure you be able to go back to the word and confirm it in the word. If I'm telling you, you saved by grace through faith and what Christ did up on the cross, I bet you I can go to Ephesians 2 and 8 and show you where not by works that any man should boast that you saved. And I bet you I can show you that you were justified. Yeah, I bet you I can go to Romans and show you that we have peace now in him through what Christ did up on Calvary. I bet you I can go to Romans 3 and show you that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All. It ain't say just a few. It say all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. I can, I can go to the book and show you and confirm everything that I tell you about Christ. 
And it's that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's the word. It say uh, in the beginning was was the word and, we, uh, and the word was with God and the word became flesh and it walked around. I mean, that's the word. And that's the body of believers. If I'm believing upon Christ Jesus, and I want to know for sure what he did for me upon Calvary made me complete. He completed me. It's complete. It's nothing else I'm looking for. I don't, I'm not, <laughs> glory be to God, I'm complete in Christ. I, I don't need nothing else. Nothing else, no, I'm, I'm fulfilled through the power of the Holy Ghost. And there's nothing else I need. <laughs> man, that's powerful, man. He's my strength. He's my peace. He's my joy. Man, why? Because in Galatians 6, he, he, he gave us a fruit of the Spirit. He gave us the fruit of the spirit. He showed us about long suffering. He showed us patience. He showed us joy. He showed us meekness. He showed us all that within the Holy Ghost. That's the that, that's the fruit of the spirit. All that. So this is why I'm telling you that when we, oftentimes, we as believers will fall uh, upon the condemnation in our minds because we don't know what the words say. And we want to, oh, I just don't know what I'm going to do. Well, if you stand on the word of God, you'll recognize that we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We're more than conquerors, not just a conqueror. We're more than conquerors through Christ. Why? He conquered death. He gives us life and he gives us to it more abundantly. See, we got to quit leaning upon our weak flesh and put it all upon Jesus Christ. That's our strength. He's our strength like no other. You can't handle anything within the flesh, man, because the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. But you've got to be willing to allow the spirit of God to dwell in you. Oh, man. Come on. I, I, be well, guys, and understand that we're complete in Christ. Well, Pastor, I don't fight, quite feel complete. Well, keep praying. <laughs> keep praying. Here it is. Come on. Uh, Philippians 3. Here it is. Philippians 3. Because I want us to see this. He said, he said, Paul said, finally, my brother, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. I'm talking to my brother. I'm talking to all my brothers and sisters in Christ now. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Okay? Rejoice in the Lord. We can rejoice in everything else. But we don't nobody want to take time to rejoice in the Lord. But it's because of him that we live, move in our very existence. But we don't want to rejoice in the Lord. We don't want to sing star, uh, uh, hymns to him. We don't want to uh, sing psalms to him. We want to, we want to rejoice in everything else but the Lord. And this is why a lot of times we find ourselves spiritually weak when it comes time to trials and tribulations and the things that will come when the, when the issues of life will come in on you like a flood. And he'll raise up a standard, but he can He can raise up a standard, but you don't know because you ain't putting no time in this word. Come on, here it is. Here it is. Finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord. Here it is. To write the same thing to you. Paul said, I'm going to write the same thing to you. I'm going to write the same thing to you. I'm writing to all these other churches. Rejoice in the Lord. I'm going to write the same thing. Why? I got to keep repeating the same thing over and over. I got to. Why? Because I love you so much that I want you to understand that, that you're complete in Christ. And I want you to be aware of, of people, and, and I want you to be aware. Watch this. Pay attention to what Paul said. Because they're out here now, and they was out then, and they're going to always be until you come back. Pay attention. Paul said, he said to write to you again, he said, to write the same thing to you indeed is not grievous, but for it is safe. Pay attention. Beware of dogs. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. For we are the circumcision. He's talking about spiritual. He's talking about spiritual circumcision. He's not talking about that which they practice because that law, that's law, that was under the law. He's talking about spiritual circumcision of the heart. The heart. The heart, here it is. And I ain't talking about the one that pumped that blood. I'm talking the emotional part of you. The one that can forgive. The one that, that, that he said deceitfully wicked all the time. But I'm talking about the new heart. Come on. He said, for we are the circumcision. Here it is. Which worship God 
in spirit and rejoice, pay attention, in Christ Jesus. Now I'm going to knock your socks off if you pay attention. He said, we worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. Why? He, why you say that, Paul? Go to Romans 7. He said, we have no confidence in the flesh. Why? Why he say that? Well, go to Romans 7. Go to Romans 7 and around about the 18th verse. I'm going to show you why Paul said we have no confidence in the flesh. And see, we need to get here because they oftentimes man want to lift their flesh up to you. Man, we need to be worshiping in the spirit. And we need to quit trying to lift up everybody's flesh and be imputing into them spiritual things. Because the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. Yeah. You, you can endure in the spirit. You can't endure in the, in the flesh. You'll fall weak every time to them, them dogs and them evil doers, them evil workers, will get you every time. Yeah, they'll get, they'll get you every time. Because they're going to want you to believe in flesh and your flesh can't, the flesh can't please God. And when they get you to believe, try to please God in your flesh and you fall short, then you're going to be the one running in the Well, I just can't do it. Well, they, the Bible never said that you could do it in your flesh. <laughs> you can't do it in your flesh. Well, I just can't do it. Well, we already know that. God knew your flesh ain't no good. That's why, you gave you the, that's why he gave us a chance to be born again through the spirit of, through his spirit. And be born of the spirit. Be born again, believers. That you have a spiritual being. You have the inner man, that Holy Ghost dwelling in you, that is able to strengthen that inner man. Come on now. The new man. Old man right there. But we can, well, we can be strengthened through the power of the Holy Ghost in that new man. Come on. Because this is what Apostle Paul said about the flesh around in Romans uh, 7 around by the 18th verse. Pay attention. And I, and I really want this word to prick us. I want this word to prick our hearts. And I want this word to speak to us spiritually because I want us to understand you want you to wear wine and why keep because you keep trusting your flesh. He's still out. And this is why. Pay attention to why you... And I want us to understand that our completion or the completeness is in Christ Jesus. Not your flesh. It's in Jesus. It's in the Spirit. It's in the Holy Ghost. Okay? Come on, man. We, we really need to see this. Because, oh, man, we got some conceited people in this world that put trust in man and they sell. And the Bible tells us don't put trust in man. And definitely deny yourself. Come on. Uh, -uh yeah, 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 yeah. He said, here it is. For I know... That in me, that is in my flesh. What you say, Apostle Paul? Yeah, Apostle Paul, everybody quote him all the time. And then everybody quote him and everybody know that how God raised him up. Everybody know that God used him mightily in, 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 in spreading the gospel. Oh, yes, sir. Used him mightily. Yeah. He said, for I know that in me, Paul, this Paul's Paul. That is in my flesh. What you say, Paul? Dwelling no good thing. He said, ain't nothing in my, he said, nothing, is nothing in my flesh dwelling no good thing. Here it is. For to will is present. He said, for the will is present. Oh yeah, hey, the will is present. But guess what he said? With me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. We're complete in Christ. Then it goes on over to Romans 8, around about the, uh, around about the, Romans 8, the very first chapter. He said, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We're complete in Christ. When we walk after the spirit, he is our completion, Okay. He's our completion. I want Holy Spirit just tugging at me about going back into this. And for for what reasons? 
Well, because to get the gospel message out, we got to continue to look to the cross. We got to continue to be strengthened through the power of the Holy Ghost, through the word of God, and to recognize who Christ is. And not only that, we got to recognize the finished work of the cross. Not that he's still working it out. It's already finished. And, 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 it's, and, it's, and everything leads right back to Christ. Everything will lead right back to Jesus Christ, the finished work of the cross. I, I, I put no confidence in my flesh at all, period. I put it all upon Jesus Christ. Everything. You got to lay it all upon him. You got to lay it all upon him. The finished work of the cross. Yeah. And I, I, I preach Christ crucified continuously. Why? Well, why you won't? Because in him is is all fullness. In him is completion. In him is, is is justification. In him is sanctification. In him is redemption. In him is wisdom. In him is knowledge. In him is understanding. In him is love. In him is joy. In him is peace that surpasses all understanding. It's everything within him. That's why God gave him to give us life uh, uh, everlasting. And he told him he'd give us life and he'd give it to us more abundantly. Oh man, he said that that he would bless us with all spiritual gifts. He all things come to us through what Christ did upon the cross. The finished work of the cross. As the body of believers, we uh, have been uh, uh, made complete through what he did upon the cross. So every every blessing and every spiritual blessing he has given it to us. Everything we're complete. We're complete, man. If we just understand what. God has done through his son, Jesus Christ, when he gave his son to die for the ungodly, to die for sinners. And we recognize that he came for the ungodly. And we recognize we come before the cross of Christ as a sinner and receive him as our savior. Recognize that it was nothing in us that God was pleased with at all. And I don't know why man think that it's something that was, that's pleasing within man that God, you know, uh, oh, they, they, they so, I, 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 I saved them because they so good. Now he saved us because he loved us. Because the Bible said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to save us from that righteous wrath that, 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 we, that, that was coming upon man. That wrath that will come upon man that don't accept Christ as his savior. And that don't come and believe upon him that his sins are washed away and that, that he's been made complete through Christ Jesus. There may be somebody tonight that, that's trusting in something or uh, someone or uh, something other than Christ Jesus for salvation. That I, I come by to tell you today that there's, there's only one way. And he is the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. And if you trust in any other kind of way other than just trusting Christ for salvation, then you need to repent and have a change of heart. Have a change of mind and come to the cross of Christ as a sinner and believe upon him yeah, as Savior and be saved. That's the only way. All I can do is plant and another can water, but God gives the increase. And I want to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is that God re requires perfection. God requires perfection. And there's nobody walking this earth perfect. Never have been but one. And that's Christ Jesus. The whole world has sinned. The whole world has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And all under sin, everybody under sin, until you come and accept Christ as the Savior. That's the only way we can be saved. And you might say, well, I live a pretty good life, man. I don't. I do this and I do that. I don't believe I need to accept Christ. Well, uh, hell bound you are. That's the word. Because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is everlasting life. Well, I don't cuss and I don't smoke and I don't drink and I treat everybody pretty good. But you came into this world as a sinner. You were born in the sin and shaped in iniquity. Yeah, every man that was born except Jesus Christ, he was born of the spirit. Walk this earth, you were born in the sin. And until you accept Christ as your savior, you're still in darkness. You're still in darkness. You're walking dead, man. You're still walking dead, man. Those who have accepted Christ as Savior, you have been quickened. You have been made alive. You have been sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. Not, I, I, I don't know where you're at in your walk, but I do know you're saved. And you have eternal, 
eternal security. Can't can nobody or nothing pull you out of Christ's hand. It can't nobody pull you out of God's hands. Yeah, but the one that haven't accepted Christ as Savior, you're still doomed. You're still hell bound. You still, uh, uh, it, it's only his grace that can save you. And his grace was given when he, when he gave his son Jesus Christ to die for the sins of the world. And if there's be anyone tonight that want to come and accept Christ on no other basis other than trusting him for salvation, then tonight you can do that. If there be anyone, anyone, and if you can do it right here, you can do it. However, you can call me at 251-490-0399, but you got to accept him as your savior to be saved and, and allow him to, 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 to put that, 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 that flesh heart in you. Cause that's the only way you can get that flesh heart is that God, God circumcised that heart. Ain't nothing you can do to do it. God has to do it. But the words say that, that, that the, the, the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe it. And Christ did. Christ came into this world, born of a virgin, born of a virgin, walked this earth perfect, perfect, never sinned. And God laid his wrath upon him and he was crucified. He was buried. And on the third day he arose from the dead and he ascended into heaven and sit on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And the Bible said all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But if you will come and receive him as Savior and believe upon him and, and, and come before him as a sinner, that's the only way you can come before him as a sinner, then he'll save you. If there be one tonight that want to be saved, then accept him in your heart. Amen. Accept him and allow him to circumcise that heart and to put in you a, 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 a fleshly heart. One that's able to believe. One that's able to trust him and one that is able to allow that sanctification process to begin but once you accept him once you accept him you've been justified he justifies you he forgives you of all your sins right now you don't have to wait till tomorrow you don't have to wait till next week once you accept him by faith he 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 justifies you right then right then you just as complete as God see you complete in Christ. Because now you believe in him for salvation through what Christ did. And not yourself. For the words say we're saved by grace. Through faith and what Christ did. Then not, 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 not by works that any man should boast. But, it, but he said we're his workmanship. So we thank God for this opportunity. And we pray that somebody tonight hey, will accept Christ as your savior tonight. And I pray that, that, that you will. And I pray that, that God will give the increase. And it's only God knows. Only God knows. Only God knows. And, and it may be somebody that accepted him tonight and say you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and accept him right now as your Savior. God knows. And I pray for you. And I pray that God will continue to allow Christ to dwell in your hearts uh, uh, richly. And that, that you will continue to allow him to lead and guide you through the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and not only that, come and learn of him. And, and, and sit up on the, uh, uh, the right doctrine that you, can, that you can be strengthened through the word. We have to have a proper teaching to understand uh, uh, what, what we believe. Amen. And, and we believe that, that God saved us through, through, uh, by grace, through faith in what Christ did upon the cross. And he is the finished work. And, and we glory in him. And we glory in him alone. And so I bless God for you guys tonight. And I pray that something was said in the spirit that will help us as, uh, as believers. And then I pray God and I thank him for that one that came and accepted Christ tonight. And, and believed upon him by faith. I bless God for you tonight. And I pray you'll strengthen in the Lord. I pray that, that, that you'll beware of uh Beware of the dogs and beware of the, the evil workers and not only that, be be aware of this foolish philosophy and all the foolishness that is in the world today to try to pull you away from grace because we're saved by grace through faith and what Christ did when, on that cross. It's nothing else. It's not, it's not, the law will brought you to him. The law brought you to the cross. 
But God raised you up by grace through what Christ did up on that cross. Yeah, so we bless God for you guys. And, and I just tell you guys, I love you guys. And I thank God for you guys tonight. And I pray that we can continue laboring in the gospel to get this gospel message out throughout the whole world. Not just in this community, but we want this gospel message to be spread around the world. So we want you to like, uh, share these messages, share the gospel message, share these uh, uh, studies, and that we pray that somebody will be saved. Our ultimate goal is to see people saved. We want to see people come and accept Christ as Savior. Uh, that's my, that's my, that's what I've been called to preach the gospel that people be saved, and I thank God for that, for that, for Him putting me in the ministry to do that, and I thank Him for empowering me to be able to preach Christ crucified with boldness and not be ashamed of the gospel. So we just thank God for this opportunity, and I pray that 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 you be strengthened, new believers, and those that are walking and has been walking with Him, continue to allow Christ to be your strength. Continue to be led of the Holy Ghost. Continue to allow the uh, uh, Holy Spirit to speak to your spirit, man, that you can walk uh, walk in boldness of Him. Amen. So I bless God for you guys, and I pray right now. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity tonight, Lord God, to, to teach and preach your word. We pray, Lord God, that, uh, that you would allow Christ to dwell in those believers' hearts tonight that would accept you as Savior. Dwell in their hearts richly, Lord God. Uh, lead them, Lord God, in the days to come, Father God, that they will continue to sit up under the, the uh, right doctrine, Lord God, the right teachings, Lord God, that will continue to, to point them to the cross of Christ, that will continue to strengthen them in the power of the Holy Ghost. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for all the believers tonight. We thank you for those, Lord God, that came tonight, that seeds were sown, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you will give the increase, for your word said that one plants, one water, and you give the increase. We thank you for uh, your power, Lord God. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. And we just thank you, Lord God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. And we give you all the glory. And we just bless your holy name. And we just lift you up, Father. And we just say glory be to God. We say hallelujah, which is the highest praise. And we thank you, Lord God, for all things. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen. Thank God for all you guys tuning in tonight. I bless God for you guys. I see all, I see every one of you, and I show nothing but love to you guys. Those that I've talked to, those that I haven't seen, those that I get to see often, I just bless God for you guys, and I thank God for your laboring. I thank God for your love. I thank God for everything that he's doing through you guys and that he's doing through the ministry. And just continue to pray that God, God's word would have free course, that it will continue to go forth, and that, that, that souls will continue to be saved, and that the body of believers will continue to be strengthened through the power of the Holy Ghost, through the Word of God, that we can continue to contend for the faith of the gospel, that we can continue to get the gospel message out around this world, that souls be saved. I love you guys. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Love you. Good night.